All right, I'm with Sylvia Medina from Miller. Uh, Miller's one of the sponsors of the uh, 11th Annual Shasta College uh, yep. Weld Academy. Um, Sylvia, we talked a little bit yesterday about uh, some of the technology that uh, Miller has sure. been coming out with. Um, what can you tell us about? I hear you got a new multi-process machine coming out. We do, and I can let the cat out of the bag now. You can. Yeah, it's gonna be an exciting product. It's uh, ACDC, uh, 220 amp machine. It's uh, really designed for like the home hobbyist and uh, light industrial user, something for your garage at home, everybody can use. And it, uh, it's designed to do big TIG stick welding. And in TIG, it'll do AC and DC welding, which no other machine right now in the market is a true all-in-one. So uh, it's intuitive to the home user. So when you select a process, it switches polarity for you. It has dual gas solenoids, so you can set up a MIG. And then you can have a TIG set up with an argon bottle and quickly switch the processes without a lot of confusion and switches. Fast. So you won't have to switch it. Like for example, if you're out there doing some stick welding, and you've got the, your your work lead on negative, and then you go to switch to TIG, it's gonna, and you go into a TIG mode, it's gonna automatically reverse that. So you're gonna put the TIG torch in, as a connect. Allows you to take the torch off and on if you need to. But once you put that torch in, you select TIG, AC, start welding. That's phenomenal. <laughs> that is absolutely phenomenal. So That's very simple to use. I, uh, intuitive. It has the LCD screen on it. Check out the website. In a couple weeks here, we're going to have it on the website. Uh, availability is going to be limited to the low-out process, but it will be available on the 31st. That's fantastic. So obviously, uh, you're you're in touch with probably a number of, of your area reps. So you sell to a lot of big companies. Oh yeah. What uh, where, what field in welding do you see the most growth in? So for young people that are thinking of getting into welding, what kind of skills uh, should they be kind of maybe targeting to sure. develop? I would say, um, well, as far as skills and you know, it's pretty diverse, you know, welding in general, but. I think you look at TIG welding, um, just being understand the equipment, not just welding, but fabrication. And there's more to it. That skilled operator, reason tape measure, to be able to set up the equipment, make sure it all works correctly, weld, put a good weld down, but fit up, fabricating, prefab, and just getting a finished product. It's just that skill level is just not there. So as far as the equipment goes, um, I would say TIG is a huge one, get good TIG welders, but pipe welding is another area. It's a good opportunity to make good money in pipe welding. Um, the equipment has uh, changed quite a bit and it's being adapted now. Shasta College has some of that newer equipment here. There's a new piece of equipment that you guys came out with just recently that's really a, a remarkable piece of equipment. Um, and when people think of a, of a Miller Dynasty, they're, they're typically thinking of, a, of an ACDC TIG machine that, that is a good stick welder sure. as well. Now you guys have, have got the, the 280. Tell us about that, that product. So our Dynasty 280 uh, came out last November uh, with a new tap on it, and it, it has been. It's a CV tap for constant voltage. Now we can hook up a suitcase 12 BS or 8 BS here, allowing you to do MIG, TIG, or stick off of once, making it a true bolt bed process machine again for the industrial user, originally designed for shipyard, going through manholes, tunnels, things of that sort. However, we're starting to find uh, mechanical contractors doing stainless steel installation. We love it because they bring one machine to the job site, they do process pipe, they can make well brackets, they can do a lot more things. Very flexible. What uh, what uh, feeders is it compatible with? Just the voltage sensing style feeder. So the two suitcase feeders, your 12 yeah, you BS. Yeah, use a constant speed feeder. Okay. Do you, what uh, if somebody wanted to use this as, like I say, a portable machine, and they didn't, uh, you know, they they got to make a choice. I'd like to have an ACDC TIG machine. I'd like to have an engine drive, but I can't afford both. Yeah. Uh, can, what size generator would they need to actually get full capacity out of that 280 in the field? So you're, you're going to want at least a 
10 or 11,000 watt generator. To get full capacity, maybe 11 to 12,000. 11 to 12, and that's and that's not going to be peak. That's not going to be peak. That's going to be continuous use. Okay, and they'd be able. To... And just it's the draw. I haven't looked at the spec, but I'd have to look and see. But you're going to need a little bit more hoof. Right on the 280 side. Any other uh, interesting things coming down the pipeline you'd like to share? <laughs> well, I think uh, this? well, you know, we're at the Weld Academy now. I think overall, you know, our industry is doing very well. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm today with just the kids being here. But from you know what I'm seeing with the California state government, the uh, workforce, through, uh, there's some. Perkins funding, we're seeing some money getting put back into our schools, which is great. Uh, it's exciting. We're actually getting the newer technology back in the schools, which hasn't been done in a long time. So yeah, I would say that's probably the most exciting thing we've got going on is a lot of good yeah. things happening at our education facilities. I've noticed that there's a lot of grant money that has been flowing in. Uh, the college has been the beneficiary of it, and some of the new equipment has been picked up recently. Is a, a big CNC shear, uh, a, a brand new plasma cutting table, a torch mate. Um, I noticed that behind you, in a box there, is, uh, is a new Miller Digital uh, Series helmet. What can you tell us about that? Oh yeah. Well, we're always doing stuff to you know up the game and. Uh, one of the new things that we've developed was the clear, clear view, which gives you the true natural light, the naturalest light possible in welding. So most hoods are set up like shape uh, three or shape four, but you see green or a yellow highlight. This is actually a true natural color out of the welding hood. So it gets rid of a lot of the pigment. A lot of people you know, have shade or, or have a hard time seeing different lights. Well, I can tell you, I do. I got old eyes, and uh, yeah. So we basically came out with this probably right at the beginning of the year, and that's the clear, clear light. And so we've had a lot of good success with that. People have been liking it. It actually came out probably a couple years ago in a couple other models of it, and now we're, we've got it actually in a lot of all our products. All the products are going to have a Just clear view technology in it. This one classic series, they right. all have it. Yeah. Now that I see that, that is a huge screen on that. It looks, yeah. yeah. And that's is all that correct. full screen? Uh, that is a full size, they, they call it a 13, 13 inch, a little over 13 inch uh, square inches. And the thing about a big screen, I mean, it depends on your visibility. You know, personally, um, if weight's an issue, you do pay that little bit of penalty by adding a larger screen, but for visibility, TIG welders love this. The visibility they get when they're working around a product. Uh, so, yes, that's the largest screen you can get in any welding. Well, if you flip that box, I, there's one thing I've always loved about your helmets that I just think you have some of the greatest headgear going. Oh, yeah, the headgear too. Um, yep. you, you can get it really dialed in to get a good fit on your head. It, what's yep. probably a little bit of a weight uh, penalty there as well, but boy, for comfort. Yeah, and I think some of that makes up for the, the comfort. Is having having that, and it takes up for the weight, weight penalty you take on the the hood. Is you don't feel the weight because the head gear is so soft. The, the head, I'm not that. Like like, by the way, it looks it looks like you could actually it'll relocate possibly some of that weight to a different yeah. part of your head, to where yeah. it doesn't feel as heavy on your head. For sure. So we've had a good success. Lots of happy customers. That little uh, thing from my little bald head turned into like a suction cup. <laughs> it doesn't even fall off. So, you like that. <laughs> so, yep, fun stuff. Well, I just want to thank you for taking some time today and sharing. Oh, absolutely. Well, sharing you. with you. Take Always care, my good. friend. Yeah. Well, thank you.